Last time on Acadian, we finally started cruising again, departed Key West, traveled through the squally Strait to Florida, and dropped anchor in Fort Pierce. We didn't stay long here, just enough to restock some provisions and prepare the boat for a five-day passage headed to North Carolina. So uh, today we are, we're finally gonna get out of here. If you haven't already, become a subscriber and be sure to give the video a like and leave a comment. Also, if you wanna be notified when we release new content, click on the bell. All right, so it is the end of day one. And we've had to motor, unfortunately, all day. It's not been windy all day. Look at this. Right there. 2.9. About the most we've seen all day. Yeah. It's been a very calm day today. We knew that it was gonna be like this. We should get some wind tomorrow. Sometime tomorrow. And then uh, for probably about 48 hours, we'll be able to sail for about 48 hours. Which will be nice. But today was not all bad. I caught a very lovely Spanish mackerel. So we're about to put that on the grill. Some fresh fish, sweet potato and some green beans. It'll be a nice meal. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Anything else you wanna say? First time watching and uh, hopefully tomorrow we can put the damn sails up. Yeah, I think we will be, we'll be able to. Look how much meat we got off that fish today. I think it's my first Spanish uh, mackerel. It's probably the biggest Spanish mackerel I've seen. Big one. All right, so how are you preparing our dinner, baby? Uh, I'm just gonna season it and I'm gonna cook it on the grill. Cook all this. Cook all that. Yeah, you might as well. We're coming up on our first night watch of the trip, and it looks like we have picked up the Gulf Stream. We're doing uh, seven and a half knots earlier uh, at 2,000 RPMs on the motor. Earlier we were traveling around five knots, so we picked up a good two and a half knots of uh, boat speed. That's what our route planning software told us to do: was to jump in the Gulf Stream and just follow it up. Should shave about a day off of our trip. Don't dance for too much wind. Yeah, we are supposed to get some wind tomorrow, and one of the one of the models showed some pretty heavy sea state. I'm hoping that that model wasn't as wasn't the accurate one. Yes, yeah, so this is our route here. So as you can see, we've still got quite a ways to go. Uh, just over 400 nautical miles left. I'm gonna pull a weather report in the next uh, next few hours. That way we see what's in front of us. Because if we need a if we need to duck in, we need to know sooner than later. Okay, it's around 7:30 in the morning, day two. We're almost to the Georgia Florida line. Should be there in about a couple hours. Jared's taking a rest. He just finished his last watch. I'm about to make some breakfast. And that's about it. Almost a day and a half of motoring. And then all of a sudden, just like that, the wind fills in. Really like all the time. Yeah, I mean, it was like, it was like, all of a sudden. And you can see this there, it's, it's full. So I think we're, uh, yeah, I think, we, I think we're gonna be able to sail for a while. We've got 19 knots now. And we're at a comfortable six and a half knots. Not too bad. Stink. I had been watching the weather forecast every day for at least 10 days prior to our departure. There was a low pressure system developing off the North Carolina coast and was forecasted to move east as we made our way north. If the forecast remained accurate, we should have had a sea state of 4 feet every 4 seconds and 20 knots of wind stern of our beam. We sailed through the night and woke to a building sea state that would worsen throughout the day. This developing low system would soon become known to the National Hurricane Center as a non-tropical system and would linger off the North Carolina coast for days, making conditions unfavorable for transiting mariners. Yeah, I tried to call this guy on the radio like, five, like three times. He, he don't even answer his call, the call. So we uh, kind of hove to a little bit, let him get out of the way, and we're going to get back on course. So 
I don't want to get run over by a thousand foot uh, cargo ship. No. Not today. No, not today. <laughs> so how was last night, babe? Rough. Babe. Last night was rough. I think we still got about a half a day left of... We got, a, we got 195 miles from here. It's not bad. We got all night tonight. Possibly get there by tomorrow afternoon. So we're in Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. So we had to pull in last night. The weather got real bad. And then yesterday afternoon. Shit hit the fan. Huge ocean swells. Yep. Like basically coming over the boat. They were beam on because of the direction we needed to head. And we just couldn't we just couldn't do it anymore. We got to a point where it was dangerous. How what did you think of, of the inlet at Charleston? It was horrible. Why was it horrible? It was horrible. It was like giant barges and shit everywhere. We came in at night. We had never been here before. Yeah. So it was just like an array of lights. We couldn't tell what was on shore, what was a boat. Yeah. That's what right. Was a marker. We couldn't tell any of that. Yeah. Hold on. The, co the Coast Guard has something to say, guys. Hold on. Thank you, Derek. Coast Guard. Okay, so, yeah, so Holly is 100% correct. So the inlet at Charleston, uh, it's it's probably 12 miles, if I had to guess. It's really long because there are a lot of, uh, it's a big shipping port, so there are a lot of container ships that go in and out of this harbor. Uh, so they have to have a really deep channel that goes way out into safe water, which is, it, it starts at about the 60 foot mark, I think. Mm -hmm. And then it comes all the way in uh, to the harbor. Yesterday, when we were charting our course to here, we read the description of the harbor on our, uh, on our charts. And it says, any storm with a westerly component, huge waves. And guess what direction the swell was coming from? And it was massive. Southwest, big swell beam on our entire uh, course into the harbor. The helmsman had his job cut off for him. I was done by the time we got in here. Darren, start running. Start running. <laughs> you can only be here if you run. No, and I ain't moving on either. <laughs> Screw the mask off. I'm gonna, start, I'm gonna start a protest about the parts being closed. <laughs> Charleston turned out to be a pretty sweet spot to detour. Stink, babe. What? Charleston? Yeah. Awesome. Beautiful place. It's huge. Big old giant houses. Gorgeous houses. Downtown area is very nice. Mm -hmm. With so much history, beautiful architecture, and delicious seafood, Charleston easily became one of our top places to visit. The weather still wasn't living up, so we decided to get a slip at the marina and wait for a good weather window. We were assigned to the Mega Dock, which every time I hear someone say that, in my head, I hear it in a WWE wrestling announcer voice. We gotta go get the clothes. Yeah. Which is way down the Mega Dock. It's a quarter mile, dude. I guarantee it's a, it's a quarter of a mile one way. It takes five minutes to walk there, so what are we gonna do? Get a beer for the road. That's it, yeah, let's get a beer. Oh. Not not the mega dog. Mega dog. Okay. Mega dog. <laughs> you can do better than that. Come on. Mega dog. Mega dog. No, it's, it's mega dog. Mega dog. <laughs> uh, I guess that's about right. <laughs> Let's go. Where's my shoes? So where are we, babe? What are we walking on? Come on, say it. Mega dog. <laughs> Mega dog. Check out this dog, dude. That's a 473. Is it?
soothing spray. Yeah. Thank you. Make it done. Even had done. Make it done. And there you have it, folks. The Mega Dog. <laughs> Crazy. Having fun? Yeah, it's happy hand pumping. I lost my, uh, I lost the fitting that goes on this thing. This thing is awesome when it works. I have to buy a new fitting, so, uh, basically this thing can't get any suction because the hole's too big. I lost a piece of the freaking oil change machine and now I got a happy hand pump because, yeah, the piece is missing. Sheesh, man. That dude does not have much room. GoPro, video time lapse. GoPro, time lapse mode. GoPro, stop recording.